Welcome back and moving on to our first segment for today. As we mentioned, we are going to shed the light on uh, the visit of uh, President um, Abdel Fattah Sisi to Abu Dhabi that took place on Wednesday. And over the phone, we have with us uh, Ambassador Mohammed Al Arabi, former Assistant Foreign Minister. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Ambassador. So first of all, I would like to shed the light on the importance of this visit, uh, especially that the President himself mentioned uh, that the security of the United Arab Emirates uh, is an integral part of the national security of Egypt as well. Yeah, I think uh, you noticed know lately that uh, Egypt uh, has exerted a lot of efforts in order to consolidate the Arab uh, solidarity and uh, I think uh, the uh, Algerian uh, president's visit to Egypt was one of these steps, and also the visit of uh, Minister Samah Shokri to Sultan uh, Oman to Muscat. I think it was also part of these efforts. And uh, now we have, uh, or we had the uh, visit of President Fattah Sisi to United Arab Emirates. I think it was a clear sign that Egypt. Uh, cannot tolerate any threats to the uh, security of the Gulf states. And uh, as you just mentioned, it is an integration part of our uh, you know, national security also at Egypt. So I think all these uh, movements and efforts, I think it was a clear message to everybody that the Arab world needs a lot of uh, uh, working uh, together in order to elaborate a new strategy to challenge and uh, to face the challenges which we uh, it's occurred now in our region, and uh, Egypt uh, will continue, you know, this kind of strategy uh, in, in the future. Right. Um, talking about uh, the meetings that took place uh, during this visit, uh, the files that were discussed and uh, talking about the region, especially Yemen and Libya. Uh, can we talk more about it and more about the political solutions uh, provided? I think uh, our region, you know, uh, for the last, uh, let us say, the decade, uh, suffered uh, from a chronic uh, problem like Syria, Libya, Yemen. And I think this is the right time now to try to have, uh, or to put more impetus to the efforts uh, to find uh, the political solutions to all these chronic issues. And I think Egypt can uh, play a uh, pivotal role in that regard. And uh, as you know, Egypt was always, you know, an instrumental uh, in any uh, kind of Arab, uh, let us say, uh, uh, problems. And uh, Egypt uh, also looking to Libya uh, as part of our national security. And that's why the talks between uh, uh, President Sisi and the Algerian president was, uh, let us say, it was one on the top of the priorities of the agenda the situation in Libya and how we can reach a sort of settlement in uh, this important country because in the two uh, countries, Egypt and Algeria, I think uh, they are caring about the stability in that uh, country, in Libya. And in the meantime, I think uh, the situation in Yemen is not just a threat to uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, United Arab Emirates, but is also, you know, threatening the uh, international security because uh, Yemen is uh, on the shore of the uh, the Bubble Magdam Strait. Uh, so I guess uh, the, our efforts, it's not just to secure a peaceful solution in Yemen, but also to secure uh, the uh, uh, free uh, passage uh, for the international trade uh, through the Red Sea and the Suez Canal. So, our uh, movement is always, you know, directed by the national security of Egypt and how we can maintain uh, the, the national security in the different uh, uh, parts of the region. And I think uh, so far we have a successful uh, strategy and I think it will uh, bear fruits in the near future. Right. Um, talking about combating terrorism and the cooperation between Egypt and, uh, uh, of course, uh, the United Arab Emirates, how far it is important, especially that uh, we all know, of course, uh, that we condemn terrorism. And the president himself also tackled this uh, important issue, especially after the terrorist attacks that uh, the United Arab Emirates witnessed uh, sometime. I yeah, I think uh, you can... Uh, uh, 
see that uh, the president of Egypt is always, you know, uh, trying to tackle this issue in a very prudent way. And uh, I think to show our solidarity with our brothers is that our evidence is uh, necessary. It's the first step to show the uh, solidarity with this important country. And uh, Egypt has a successful strategy also for combating uh, terrorism uh, in, uh, uh, in Sinai. And I think we succeed on that. So our uh, let us say, experience is uh, we can uh, extend it to some other countries in the, in the region. And uh, I think our help uh, will be at the different levels, uh, political and uh, maybe in the uh, international uh, arena. Also, Egypt will support it our efforts to uh, uh, mobilize all the international community in order to fight these uh, Hussein uh, groups in the Yemen. So uh, we are with uh, all the uh, three countries uh, who are trying to combat terrorism. And I think Egypt was at the, at the forefront of this campaign for, 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 let us say, the last decade. And we already succeed on that. Talking about uh, incentives, uh, more incentives for economic cooperation between Egypt and the Gulf countries. Uh, yes, of course, we have many uh, different means of cooperation between the United Arab Emirates and um, Egypt uh, when it comes to uh, economic projects uh, taking place. But, uh, of course, we, we need more. We are looking for more uh, in the near future. Yes, the United Arab Emirates actually is on, on the top of the countries uh, who have uh, uh, direct investment in Egypt, and uh, uh, all of us we can feel that this country is supporting Egypt in this uh, field. And of course, yes, Egypt is a very good environment now for uh, more investment from all the Gulf states. And I think uh, this is our main task now to promote our country uh, in order to uh, invite. Uh, more uh, direct investment uh, in different uh, places, so it's canal, it's, uh, uh, everywhere actually. So uh, I think our cooperation with the uh, Emirates has uh, different uh, uh, fields, and uh, I am, can say that I am satisfied with all this uh, progress in the cooperation between the two countries. But as you must, uh, you just said, yes, we need more uh, investment uh, from different countries, and I think Egypt is. Uh, paving the way by having you know, a good environment in Egypt in order to attract uh, the direct investment from different countries. So how can Egypt and the United Arab Emirates maximize the potentialities uh, in their resources as well, talking about uh, the um, regional and international level? Uh, I think the two countries, they are uh, in the forefront also of the uh, uh, the solar energy field, and, uh, the wind energy field also. And so I think uh, we can cooperate in different uh, fields, especially for these climate change issues, which is now prevailing on the, the agenda of the international community. Egypt will host uh, this year the uh, conference in Sharm el-Sheikh, and next year the uh, United Arab Emirates will host it. So I guess uh, this kind of cooperation will uh, give a sort of, uh, let us say, impetus to our uh, diplomacy in the two countries. So I guess uh, we will witness a sort of cooperation in, the, in this year and in the next year in order to tackle an important issue facing the world now, which is the climate change. So uh, we have a lot of fields for, of cooperation, and uh, I think uh, we can extend you know, this kind of cooperation uh, in the different levels and uh, I guess this is the main uh, target of the two leaders of Egypt and the United Arab Emirates. Also, uh, same with the different means of cooperation, uh, we have also the defense uh, industries field as well. Yes, uh, you, know, you know, the United Arab Emirates is uh, producing now uh, weapons, and, uh, let us say, uh, different uh, types of uh, weapons uh, and uh, they are exporting it uh, and I think uh, they uh, were uh, very active in the last uh, exhibition here in Cairo uh, and I think uh, the, uh, the, uh, the participation was a clear uh, sign that they are in progress uh, to be part of the, uh, this industry 
and also Egypt, uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, progress in that field. So uh, uh, the cooperation between the two countries in that field, I think it will be very important and it will uh, be a plus for the capabilities of the two countries. And uh, I'm sure that we have this kind of cooperation, but uh, it might be, uh, let us say, not on the media and uh, not in the, uh, uh, the press. So what is our competitive advantage when it comes to the cooperation between Egypt and the United Arab Emirates? Uh, United Arab Emirates and Egypt, I think both of them, they are looking to the, uh, uh, the transformation to the digital uh, uh, era. I think uh, we can uh, play, or let us say, have a lot of cooperation in that field. And uh, both countries, they are advanced in that field. So more uh, cooperation and more uh, working together and try to uh, invite the young people in order to work together in that field. I think this will uh, be a very good uh, field for cooperation and it might have uh, very good results for both countries. So uh, I'm sure that the young people from both countries, they can... Uh, uh, be uh, uh, sort of uh, important in that uh, industry, uh, the transformation to the digital uh, era. And uh, uh, I, I guess this is part of the cooperation that will be in the future between the two countries. So talking about um, concrete steps to be taken uh, during this uh, critical period of time, we know that uh, we are facing challenges uh, all over the world when it comes to economy in general. Uh, so, and again, we say that Egypt was able um, to achieve a lot during this period uh, also to uh, keep its um, uh, growth, economic growth, and it increased as well uh, despite of all uh, challenges that took place. Well, I, I, I think you will agree with me that the whole world now is facing uh, sort of uh, uh, mitigation in the uh, economic growth. Uh, it will uh, go down uh, to maybe uh, by significant uh, numbers uh, this year. And uh, that's why I guess this will be a very good uh, reason for the Arab world to be more integrated and try to work together you know, this kind of uh, economic uh, cooperation, it will have uh, a safety net for the societies in the Arab world because, you know, the slowdown of the economy, it might be, uh, has a sort of impact on the social security and the social stability in the uh, many of the Arab world. So we need uh, to adhere to the principle of uh, the uh, economic cooperation and uh, trying to help uh, you know uh, each other in order to secure the social security and social stability in our region uh, the economic uh, issue is part of the problems of the uh, or let us say the part of the uh, uh, the causes of the uh, uh, problems which we are facing in our region so uh, this might be uh, a very good target for all the Arab leaders in order to enhance the economic cooperation between the Arab countries. To what extent uh, one can say that Egypt succeeded in providing environmental or friendly environment uh, to attract more uh, Gulf uh, investments here in Egypt? Uh, yes, we, uh, we can claim that uh, we were uh, successful in that uh, field and I think uh, the uh, projects which is now everywhere in Egypt, especially in the Suez Canal region, I think it is a sort of uh, manifestation that we have uh, a very good attraction or let us say environment to attract the uh, Arab investors to come to Egypt. Uh, I think we are in the right way so far. Right. Um, actually, uh, Mr. Muhammad Al-Arabi, uh, Ambassador Muhammad Al-Arabi, former Assistant Foreign Minister, thank you very much for joining us. Right, and uh, moving on to a quick break, then we'll be back with more on The Breakfast Show.